Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Dungeon Boys. My name is Keith. I'm your D-D-D-D-D-D-D-D. That's a lot of credentials there. Yeah, me and Porky Pig were hanging out earlier. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Josh playing as the ever-lovable Arlo. Zenus playing as Grim. And Bryce playing as Jack Law. And it is the South Carolina summertime. We are in our air conditionless studio. Uh, so if you start to hear the sound of big beads of water roll down any of our <laughs> bodies, please tune that out and just keep listening us, to us play this D&D game of my imagination. Uh, also, this episode, of course, is brought to you by Duke's Barbecue, which, as we all know, is not a sponsor of this program. Not sponsored. Still delicious. They are air conditioned, though, mm-hmm. so I'm just saying. Maybe yeah. one day. Maybe we'll Loosely. record one day. Loosely air conditioned. Loosely, yeah. Loosely air conditioned. Is air conditioned as a building where they where you roast pork all day. <laughs> Can be. So, uh, last week, or last two weeks ago, we've, we've been really falling down on the job. I don't know if we can call it falling down on the job. But we've had several recording issues where we couldn't record uh, enough. Keith been so, busy. Yeah, it's just me. It's my fault. But we have made some <clears throat> significant upgrades to the sound deadening. In that's here. true. Hopefully, that's that's quite a claim, Josh. But hopefully, hopefully people are hearing some sound deadening. It does feel way quieter in here than it did last time we recorded. Actually, it's a little. And bit, we even have the fans on. Yeah, yep. it's a little bit eerie. Absolutely. Yeah, we have a fan zone for the first time. If you can hear, if you can hear the ceiling fans, let us know. Yeah, let us know. <laughs> It'll be hard to sift through that to get to, you know, the, you letting us that know with all the other stuff that we hear from. <laughs> Over the sound of our <laughs> melting selves. <laughs> I'm going to make myself cry. All right, let's play, <laughs> let's play D&D. Let's do it. Last time... You guys, sent, you set up a meeting with Guh, who is like a slave gnome on this ship that is poorly treated. He's treated like a like a less than, uh, and all he can say is the word Guh. Uh, he doesn't even do that very well. But he, yeah, he learned, uh, or you learned that he has this book that you'd stolen from the ca- captain's quarters where he sleeps with Captain Talazar, um, and not like that, you nasty eyebrow movers. <laughs> um, so you you had this book and you, were, and you were and you and you were looking for a map, a magical map that would tell you where some magic items were, and you were kind of giving up on it. You wanted to meet with Gah. What was the intention of the meeting? Beat the crap out of him. No, no because we were I, gonna... I Arlo can speak gnomish, <laughs> right? Yeah, and we were kind of thinking like you know maybe he just knows the one word in like common. Yeah. Yeah, and we found, we broke into the captain's quarters, mm-hmm. and we couldn't find anything, so we knew that Guh was like the bookkeeper. Right. So we wanted to see if he knew of like okay. the secret compartment. But it, essentially it was about the map, it wasn't about yes. missing Bird. Bird is no. still missing, it was about finding the map to meet with Guh. Uh, Guh, you get, he, Guh doesn't give you much information, you try to put <coughs> these magical locks on him, and there's this weird situation that... He, he the the magic that was on him could not be removed. There was a spell. Um, what was the spell? Dispel magic. I was kind of I was my my brain was saying diffuse magic. So dispel magic was used Save several times, one. and it just wasn't it wasn't enough to work. Um, and so Gu remained Guing. When you finally got fed up, gave him his mm-hmm. little book back, and then you know he turned to it and spoke to it. And the voice of a familiar god, God uh, Garl Glittergold, came from the book that you heard. Uh, and he spoke to you and revealed that the map was inside this book, that this book actually turns into a magical map. But well, we have the map now. You have the map now. Go has the book. No. no. I've got I've got the book you that is the map. The map. Yeah. And I've also got the other book that he threw away. Yeah. Okay. So you tried to... That was my book of sea creatures, wasn't it? I think so, yeah, because yeah. the book of yeah. sailing was the map. You essentially tried to, you know... Say, oh, go! You can have this book. We want the other book. And he was like, Yeah, no, yeah, I don't want that. Uh, and then he really wanted his book back. And then you, you guys, he like the last. I think the last scene of the last episode was him looking down, kind of dejected, it's sad. Yeah, we should just take him with us. We should. We lost Barb. Let's just replace him. <laughs> <laughs> but now the the game is a foot. We, we need another companion with a speech impediment. <laughs> One thing I don't remember Who also is, used to be a slave and is also short. <laughs> I don't think Misiko is down there with you. Mm, He's no. roaming the boat. Yeah. He do what he do. I don't remember why. I don't remember we, why either, to be honest had, with you. We He's, had, he's <laughs> kind of doing his own thing on this boat. He is all about the eating. And oh, so yeah, he's about, a dwarf. That, he, he was doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's like... 
you know, once, once he's done eating, he's got to keep eating some more. And okay. he, he did talk about he needs to head up to the deck to uh, take care of some uh, downloading later. So, pooping? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. The poop dick. Yeah. We we had some kind of conversation with um, Slivius. Did we not? Yeah, that was, I think, two yeah. episodes ago, maybe. You guys, it was revealed to you that Slivius Bile is actually also a servant of the scale, this old hey, supposedly, man. But supposedly. But Garl just told us we can't trust anybody, so hmm. sinking the ship's looking like a pretty good option. <laughs> we'll see. We'll get, Ain't nobody we'll going to miss them locks if a ship don't make it back to port. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true. Uh, so let's, let's start playing. Let's do it. I, I, I give uh, Arlo back the sea creature book. I've changed my mind, Arlo. I'm not going to give this back to the captain. Hey, I get to keep the sea critter book. Yes. All right, I like it. The only one I looked up so far was that little uh, octopodly thing there. Got a bunch of them little wiggly arms. Done. Oh. done what? With the recap? Are yeah, we, yeah. Are we re- said, ready to get back in? I said, let's play. Yeah, we're in. Oh, okay. Y'all are having a conversation. We're going to do it. You mean an octopus, Arlo? Yeah, I really <coughs> that's how you say it in fine talk. Yes. I'm, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I go. I go to walk toward the stairs going up. Okay. Because we're in. We're in the. Yeah, you guys bottom. are in the cargo yeah. hold right now. Yeah, so I'm going. To and you're ho- you're holding the sailing book. I'm correct? gonna like tuck it into my jacket. Okay. Keep. Hide. As you go to walk sure. away, uh, Gu comes up behind you. And he like tugs on your coat or whatever, and like he's like reaching out his hand. Gu. I'm sorry, Gu. I can't give this back to you. Gu. Go, no. Go, go, stop it. Go, like, like he's like white knuckling the back of your cloak or the back of whatever cloak, like your pants leg or whatever he can reach, and he just like squeezes it really hard. Go, man, take you down. <laughs> and then he lets go, and he walks to the other end of the cargo hold to go up the other stairs. Didn't we blow up the other stairs or something? There were pieces of it missing. <laughs> I, I, I completely it's destroyed just... the bottom half of the other stairs. Go just walks okay. over there, puts his hands on his hips. <laughs> so he's he's heading up, presumably back up to where he stays. Because it's like mid morning now, or it's like a, it's the wee hours, is it not? Yeah, yeah. We met him pretty dark early. thirty. Dark, dark thirty. Dark thirty in the evening or dark thirty in the morning? Dark thirty in the morning, I think. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the room and take a nap. I'm okay. gonna set up uh, Sir Stuffed and I'm gonna take a nap. Okay. So Sir Stuffed is set up Ooh. and he is protecting you. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jack, Arlo, what are you guys doing? Grim has left the cargo hold. Uh, I am. I guess that's what I was doing when when we had the, the whole meeting start to happen, like. Just kind of going through my stuff, getting getting rid of things, but like I'm I'm like packing up, like I'm I'm ready to get moving. Like okay. I'm worried about, you know, where the heck is Burb, and I know that you know we we got to do something soon instead <coughs> of just poking around in, in sure. dark corners. We got to act. Sure. Yeah. Also, based on the the travel of the boat, you're about a, you're you're expecting that this next day will be to, by the end of the next day you should be porting in Buckland. I like porting. We are porting. Anchoring. Um, is that, is that a word, verb? Porting? I don't know. To make port. You're making port. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, Just lost all our I listeners. B- I believe I promised Pinkerton to Loose that I would be helping him with breakfast. So. Ah, yes. Ooh, Pinkerton. <laughs> Pinkerton. Pink, 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 Pinkerton to Loose. <laughs> I just remembered his voice. <laughs> okay. All right, so, so yeah, Jack, you head upstairs, and before you can make your way to, to your room, you hear a voice from the kitchen. Hey, oh, hey was that, there. Wait, was that Jeremiah or Jack? You were, you were Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Dang it. Oh, never mind. So I got to make a trip to Grim first. Or, no, you can I mean, turn this, it off yourself. Huh? You can turn off your disguise no, yourself. No, he's he was Jeremiah when he was helping. He's going to uh, get it back on. Yeah, oh, I mean, bad. I imagine we're all leaving at the same time, are we not? Sure. I mean, that's up to you. You got to tell me when you leave. All right. Well, Jack just going to show up Grim. Turn me on. <laughs> yeah. Then I wanna, oh. I wanna catch Grim on the stairs and be like, Grim, make me Jeremiah. Sure thing, buddy. I, I put out oh, my. That's supposed to be more clap sounding. Yeah. For that. Woo. thing. Okay, yeah. That was the sound of their hands coming together. And then he becomes a Jeremiah. Okay. Because I am, I am, mini faced into Grim. Yeah, you're. Yeah, you've got the mask on, but you're Grim on top of it. Yeah. Speaking of. 
I guess no, I can't make you a roll of wisdom for that. Because last yeah. time you didn't either. Yep, yeah, you're right. Yep, because you're yourself. <laughs> okay, he's getting oh. lost in himself. Jack, why don't you roll a wisdom saving throw for me? Okay, boss. That's a wisdom. And that's a eighteen. The transformation does not affect you. you nice. Are, you are, or it doesn't ne- negatively affect you. Before we get too far along, sure. Can I? Just because I. I I'm not feeling confident about our our puzzle solving <laughs> mystery sleuthing abilities, and I fear this is that Arlo. I fe- yeah. yeah, and I I fear, actually fear that this entire ship may be destroyed at sea. <laughs> okay, there's I, I there's don't precedence wanna, for that. Fear. I don't want to lose all. So can I can I maybe grab uh, as many of the basilisk skills scales as I can? You absolutely can. And just <laughs> sure. shove them in my bag. Yeah, sure. Cool, cool. Basilisk scales, big boy scales. We, you can get five of them in your bag. We can get five? Okay, so I'm just going to grab five of those and add them to the old list there. Go just sleep in the case. lifeboat. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> just wait for the rest of the boat to sink, and then the lifeboat just hits the water and doesn't go down. It's like somebody just like waiting at a, bu- at a bus stop almost. Like, you know it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to be patient, you know? Perfect. Okay. If this was like a video game level or something, like you're 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 prepping for the boss fight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Big open room. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got basilisk scales. I got five of them bad boys. Yes, sir. Oh look, okay. a big cache of ammo and health, <laughs> and a giant room with nothing in it. Yeah. I wonder what's about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let's, go, let's just go play video games today. <laughs> let's do it. Just kidding. Yeah. All right. This up, is Drim? a video game. Drim uh, the video. Drim is asleep. Drim, Drim is asleep. Um, Jeremiah, you go upstairs, <laughs> and you are you are about to. I guess where you maybe you're, are you walking towards the kitchen? You are trying to perform this duty. You you remember this? Yeah. Okay. So. Peeling taters. So <laughs> Pinkerton Toulouse is there, uh, and he is. Morning, chef. Yeah, he is chopping it. Good morning, Jeremiah. <laughs> I think that this, it was something close. Pinkerton to that. is like a large man. Yeah, he's you know? he's very large. I'm picturing the thing from like Shrek the Third or whatever. The guy who's selling the chimichangas, the Chimichanga. big fat ogre. <laughs> sure. I think he's. Did we say he was a man. Yeah. Pinkerton yeah. to lose. He's just a fat man. Yeah. Just, yeah. That kind of mythical. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Jeremiah. We're gonna be doing the same thing we were doing y- yesterday. Chopping taters. That's not his voice. What was it? I, it's it's not childish. It you were commenting high. on like it's, it's high, very like Justin Roiland like. Yeah, it was. I don't know. Just ah. stick with. We're it. gonna lock it in though. Yeah. He. It's been a few days <laughs> on the boat. The high, long all the, all the, the tater fumes. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the potato fumes that we use down here. You know, it is, it is, they get stuck in your brain. Uh, good morning, Jim. Hi, you help me chop some potatoes t- this morning. Absolutely. I'll, I'll get right. I'll go do that. Here's your knife. He turns I, around a knife for you. I, I brought my own as usual. It, it's fine. Well, very, Thank very you. well. So we're having uh, 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 scalloped potatoes, uh, scrambled eggs, and uh, 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 some sausages for breakfast this morning. We got a ton of sausages to make as well. So you'd like the potatoes thinly sliced? Yes, please. <laughs> They were never Peeled seen first. again. Do you think we ought to do natural cut style, or or do you want to peel them? I don't know. I was always part of the older generation. We always peeled our potatoes. Oh, that's fine. You know, that's, I'm just trying to save you some time and peel them up. I've already peeled them. <laughs> <laughs> the job's done. <laughs> it gets pretty dark. I don't really spend much time around this boat except in the kitchen. Anything interesting going on? Um. Yeah. Uh, did you hear any bumping around last night underneath you? Bumping around? Why would I? I didn't hear anything. What, what was going on? Uh, some of the stuff that was being transported got loose and started rolling around in the... Oh, well. In the cargo hold. Well, that's, that sounds pretty wild. Did they get it taken care of down there? Yeah. Luckily, nothing got broken. That's good. Except the stairs. Okay, how's the weather? I haven't even been on deck for the last couple of days. Bright and sunny. Splendid. Sound like we're having a very <laughs> his voice. Splendid. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like we're having a pretty Extraordinary. good. Extraordinary. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, we should be. Uh, we should be coming into port in Buckland. 
Uh, tonight, I hope you brought your, your winter clothes. Is it supposed to be cold? Oh, it's very cold. Have you ever been to the Round Isle before? I haven't. Well, it's it's cold down there. You know, to the south of the world, is mostly snowing most times. It snows from early in the fall to late, late, late in the spring. Do you know anything about the port? In what... If we dock our boat there, that's about all I know. I, what, what questions do you have? Any specialty stores where you could uh, perhaps take something from your adventures to sell? I don't have a lot of adventures, but uh, sure, I guess so. There's plenty of merchants in Buckland. Less so nowadays since they decided <coughs> to be a little bit uh, contrary to the... The High Council and their wills for the for the world. They're they're kind of uh, unruly children at the moment. I see. Anywhere that you'd recommend, we absolutely must see. Never been to the place. Hmm. Tourist attractions. Anything. Well. Places of note. You know, this time of year, I'm not really sure. Most of the time, most people are just trying to you know survive the winter. But there is a a. a Rather magnificent mine to the south of the city, uh, but I know they've been taking in a lot of work. If you if you're looking for extra work, you know I'm sure they they take you in and, and give you something to do for some extra coin. Uh, but other than that, Buckland is a, is a very is a very uh, utilitarian kind of place. There's not a whole lot of frills in Buckland. They're they're just sandwiched with. They got harsh weather from the south, the winter coming up north, and they got harsh weather from the sea battering the city from the from from the north. And really, there's not a it's it's a working class city. There's not a whole lot of, of recreation going on. Now, of course, if you you love the wilderness, you can go down to Medine's Beard down there in the south, on the south end of the Round Isle. That's a long ways off, but there's here magical creatures and big hunts galore down there, as well. I believe. If you're a history buff, there are some ruins near the city. The ruins of Axnamore. Hmm. Interesting. I feel as though I've heard of them before. They're Maybe. On, they're on the D&D map that he made. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where, why do I know that name? You, you've, met a, you've met or heard of them before. Um, At the mention of the word sandwich, like two decks below, Arlo just kind of like picks up a little bit. <laughs> I uh, feel a disturbance. I've never even re- I've never gotten off the boat in Buckland. This is just second hand. Now I'm telling you these these things. Have you ever left this boat, Chef Toulouse? Were you born on this boat? <laughs> Thank you for calling me Chef. Not many people down here call me Chef Toulouse. That's <laughs> that ti- that fancy title. Uh, I've I've been off the boat, just never in Buckland. I live in uh Strongwater. I see. Well. I'm going to get back to peeling these potatoes. Yeah. Thank you for all your information. <laughs> You're very welcome. Are you trying to say there's no time to lose? <laughs> <laughs> Josh, you're in the penalty box. <laughs> that one was for free. <laughs> okay. The Go doors on. are locked. Arlo's sinking with his boat. <laughs> <laughs> so that scene, that scene is complete. Arlo is packing his bags. Uh, do uh, any, what are, are there any, Grim, you're sleeping until morning, I assume. Arlo, are you trying to get some sleep or some rest at all? Um, yeah, but I don't want to sleep, like, out in the open. I want to kind of, like, find a little hidey hole or something. In the cargo hole. Yeah. Okay. All right, so. Sir Stuffed is sharpening his bowie knife. <laughs> so, we'll say long rest for everybody um, throughout the evening. We'll say not every, well, I guess, Jack, you don't really necessarily get a long rest, do you? Did you need one? I, I don't sleep. I can do. I have to read your sailing book. Did you get yeah. the book back? No, I'm keeping that. Uh, I already read the sailing book. Mm-hmm. I um, can do menial, simple tasks, and that uh, equates to my long rest, but I, didn't, I haven't lost any health. so. Okay, cool. So the evening kind of passes without any more issue. Um, you don't hear anything special out of Guh. He kind of... Yeah. Grim, as you get to your room, as you shut the door to go inside, you can see Guh, like, moping up the stairs um, on the far end of the... On the far end of the boat, going back up to the deck. Can the door lock? Sure. I'm going to lock it. Yeah, you can lock the door. The door is locked. Do the beds move? You lock it by <laughs> pushing a bed against it. <laughs> yeah, sure. The beds right. can move. I'm going to move one of the beds in front of the window. Okay. Okay, sure. Uh, so there's a bed in front of the window, 
and there the door is locked and you sleep soundly through the night no no issues there uh, everybody is is sleeping you're chopping uh, potatoes and onions and everything else that you need for breakfast and breakfast is served and the the boat the boat comes to life but <clears throat> as that morning as the boat comes to life uh grim i guess as you wake up roll a perception check for okay, me okay man where's my perception 11 11 you hear some commotion from the top of the deck uh make my way there Okay. With all haste. Uh, Jack, do you also want to roll a perception for me? I do. Twenty. Ooh. You also hear some commotion from the deck, but you hear from the top deck, you can hear a little bit of some commotion, some shouting up there. But what really makes you notice that something is a bit amiss is that the, the orc guards and the orc mage that we haven't really discussed since getting on the boat, and you killed some of them. Um, we did do that. Mm -hmm. Since Fed them to the Gorgon babies. Yeah. Uh, there are three orcs and one orc mage in the, uh, in the galley, and they go sprinting up. They, they all stand up and, like, you know, push their plates aside. And go Onto the floor. running up to the to the deck. They seem to be have been alerted by something, and they're running up that that way. I'm gonna grab Sir Stuffed. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm gonna take him with me as well. Okay, cool. Question. Yeah. Deactivate. Where is Misiko? Slash Porky. You got. He didn't come back to the room last night. Um, you saw him wandering around <laughs> when you went to the galley. Yeah, you saw him wandering around down there. But Misiko. Well, seemed, I, I, you said like they pushed their trays away, and immediately I'm thinking like. Porky comes in. Yeah. <laughs> oh. no, yeah, but he's he'll, he's still it's free real estate. He's still Porky dressed, uh, and he was kind of wandering the galley. He was there for breakfast. Haunting you saw him down the there, galley. Jack. Um, but oh. he and he's currently still in there for breakfast. You can see you oh. kind of, if you want to give him like a how are you doing? A little like you know knowing glance you can. But he's actually still in the breakfast area as the orcs go running away, um, hanging out down there. I feel uh, like even though his body is just an illusion. It's still getting, like, bigger. <laughs> <laughs> um, Arlo, you're just too far down to be rolling that perception check for what's going on on the top. Okay. So yeah, I'm I, like I won't let three you roll doors that down one. or something. Yeah. Three, three doors down. Three for all. <laughs> that band. Anyway, so, yes, there is a commotion. Jack, how do you want to do, do, do anything with that? Is breakfast done and all? Or? Yeah, service is complete. As uh, all this is going, like people are still eating, but y'all are done cooking, and Pinkerton Toulouse is washing dishes. I have to admire the fact that Jack or, or was it Jeremiah doesn't want to abandon his post. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Chef Toulouse, is there anything else I can help you with? I believe I'm needed on deck. Oh no, you don't even get paid. I'm washing dishes. Please get out of here. Let's right. thank you for your help. Thank you for the information and your time. You're very welcome. If you're ever in strong water again, look me up. Pinkerton Toulouse. I, I mean, if you see me again on the boat, we'll talk, but... I absolutely will. Wonderful. And I leave that cooking area. And uh, I'm going to go to, like, the the door to the cargo hold, and I'm just going to kind of beat on it real quick, and then I'm just going to head straight up. I'm not going to go tell Arlo okay. or anything. So, but... Arlo, you hear a beating on the cargo hold door. I do hear it? Yeah. Nice. Can I go and investigate such such you can, pounding of the door? You certainly can. Okay. <laughs> investigate the pounding. <laughs> of the door. <laughs> of the door. Yeah, you go up there and... I perceive pounding. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just... What do you want to do to investigate it? Is that the door that was locked? It appears to be made of door. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the locks are on it, but they're not actually locked. Right. Okay. All right. Can they're I... There. Can I poke out my head? Sure. They just exist. Okay. You can. Uh, also, you, you, see, you see the galley? Yeah. Okay. Kind of normal. No one's there. There, the, Whoever knocked on this door is no longer there. And the galley is full. It's, it's bustling with breakfast. You can see Pinkerton Toulouse at the far end. Um, That's a buffet right there. Yeah, it's bustling a, it, with breakfast. Yeah. Um, mm. There's lots of there's lots of food out there. and you know, Well, there's not a lot of food left on the buffet tray, table, but... 
uh, on the buffet, you know, line, but there are people eating and there are people enjoying themselves and getting ready for another day uh, on this boat, their last day on the boat. Passengers, cargo passengers, as well as crew are down there getting getting filled up. The you can see breakfast. You can see Pinkerton Toulouse cleaning up his dishes, but you can't see anybody who seems to be interested in your door. Okay. Can I cast pass without trace because I want to I want to poke around and see what's going on because that sounded urgent I guess sure yeah um, what is pass without that's, it makes you like shadowy yeah it gives me like uber advantage to stealth checks okay so yeah. I just because I, like I don't 10. have a ticket yeah. I am unknown on this <coughs> vessel so okay um, yeah it just gives me a plus 10 to stealth okay um, and just, I'm all like shadowy okay cool shadowy, little so. short shadow boy so we gonna do that thing that we do, and um, I guess I want to start like walking around, looking around, uh, seeing what I see, like what knocked on this door, what's what's the commotion. Okay, um, I guess if you're gonna need, I need you to roll a stealth a stealth check for me. Okay, you can see if we you do truly pass without a trace. Twenty one, impressive. Yes. Eight. Whoa, twenty one. Plus 10, so 31. You are without, there is no trace <laughs> of you. It is, you are without it, trace. It is, hey, we assume you have passed. Yeah, it is silent. The, the gods have lost your soul. You are so. So I just stealthily. go walking out in the middle of the room, um, waving at people. They don't even notice me. No, I'm just um, Yeah, not necessarily that. All right, but so. You're moving around, you're checking things out. Yeah, can I can I roll a, a perception to see if I hear what they're hearing? Sure. Yeah. At this point, yes. Okay. You're on, you're down here on the gal in the, the only two uh, levels down. That is a nineteen. So you also hear some commotion. You hear the you hear what sounds like the voice of Captain Talazar shouting, okay. but also what sounds like the sound the sound of like footsteps and stomping up up the uh, up the ramp, okay. as well as you can hear the sound of um, <clears throat> crew members shouting. But you can't really make out what they're saying. I'm not sure of directions or doors or things like that because I haven't really explored very much. Yep. But I would like to sneakily make my way towards the kerfuffleage. Yeah, the kerfuffleage is, is upward of you. Okay. All right, All right, so as you begin to do that, so you and Jack are doing that, but you not before Grim has already come out of the, the cargo hold onto the deck of the ship. But I don't notice Jack or Grim, right? No, you're behind them. Yeah, so I'm, just, I'm a floor up yeah. as well. Okay. So yeah, so essentially Grim is only one level below this kerfuffle. Jack was two levels below and you were three. So you guys are kind of following each other up there at this point. Okay. Uh, so Grim exits the cargo or the the staircase onto the deck first. Um, and what he sees is a, a fair good many people on the deck of the ship. Too many. Fair Time good first. many? A fair good many. Uh, but what m- will possibly maybe alarm him or not uh, is that all of the orc troops in the boat are on the deck of the ship. They are not looking at you. They are looking towards the front of the ship as Captain Talazar is kind of pushing his way through. Her? The, um, her, yeah, sorry. Captain Talazar is pushing her way through. through. So there are, at this point, I need to get a count of orcage. Orcage. Excuse me. So there are... are they, they're not facing me? Correct. There are eight... There are eight orc soldiers up there, and there are three orc mages up there, and they're all kind of in this crowd looking beyond the front, the main middle mast. They're all kind of on the boat across it. You can't see what they're looking at, but they're looking at something on the far end, the front end of the boat. Okay. Um, I, I want to use the mask to become just some other person I've seen on the boat, just some okay. random person. Gotcha. Some random. You, you, know, you, you can make you can make a choice as to what you look like. Then there are plenty of a variety of people. Like you can't you can't say I want to look like an eight foot tall like Hulk beast, <laughs> but like within reason. Um, there's at least three of those on the ship, but you've never seen them. Just a very like sodden, <laughs> very um, someone from the kitchen. Okay. I imagine like if there's like a dishwasher type person who's got just, long hair and just greasy from all yeah, the dishwashing, okay. just You're kind a greasy of dishwasher. slunched over a little bit, a little bit shorter than Grim. Just I'll just walk Hans Maytag. That's his name. <laughs> <laughs> you you look like Hans. Hans Hans Maytag. Okay. Who's from? He's a teenager from California. Okay, um, yeah, Hans Maytag is your name. <laughs> like, in, in my head, he's he that a reference like to something? Maytag, Maytag? Is a dishwasher. Well, I know. Okay, I get um, you now. Gotcha. 
he looks like Jesus from Walking Dead. Gotcha. Cool. So, um, who coincidentally looks like American Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'll just be walking. <laughs> okay. American Jesus. Well, it's just the Jesus that America yeah, thinks, I know. wants us to think looks like like blue eyed Jesus. Yeah, what I'm looks talking like about. King Jorge's son. Yeah. So. Um, you're walking through and what you hear up there is you can hear um, a crew member say saying Captain Talazar looks like Gull wasn't checking for stowaways on your boat we've got one rolled out of the mug right here as Captain Talazar is creeping through the the creep. She's not creeping. <laughs> She's uh, pushing her way through the... Uh... I want to try to creep my way through as well. Okay. And as you do that, you can hear her saying, Go! You've got some explaining to do! <coughs> as she creeps through. Uh, and Ga, you... Uh, I guess... Do you want to roll anything to see how you push through these orcs? Or do you just want to like... You're, are you trying to put your hands on them? Or are you trying to like... Snake through what? How are you doing uh, this? I guess just like snake through, because I imagine I don't have Grim's strength at this point. Yeah. I don't know Hans Maytag's stats. All right, so as Hans Maytag goes to push his way through, like you go to try to sneak your way through all these orcs, but the, the one on your right notices you and he says, "I'll stand back. This is all my business." He puts his hand out to keep you from pressing pressing it's very, through. It's very soapy. Like I could just like <laughs> slip through the ground. <laughs> I don't know. All right, man, whatever. <laughs> Put your hands in your pockets. Yeah, he doesn't really even hear you say that as he, like, turns oh, around. to they're, well, trying, they're inching into this Can thing. I see through, like, between them, what they're looking at? Yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah, roll perception to see how well you can peek through and see. What are my modifiers? Um, with flat zeros at this point. Okay, this nice. Hans Maytag is not nine. special. <laughs> nine. Um, so you in can see... In his own little world, he is very yeah. special. So as you peek around, it takes you a little while. You're kind of like walking back and forth, trying to get a good angle through these through these um, through these orcs, and you can't really see a whole lot. But what you can see is on the ground. You can see like Captain Talazar is standing over something that's laying on the ground, a, a, a body of a creature, and Gu is standing right beside Talazar. And between the two of their little legs, you can see uh, what looks like the feet of a kinku creature. I, I don't see it's, this. Like I'm still making my yeah. way up there, right? So by this Bad point, things are going yeah. to happen. <laughs> by this, by this point, uh, as you as you're doing that, Jack, you have just come out of the uh, cargo hole, or out of the stairs, and you're now on the deck of the ship. Also, I should describe it's a very bright, sunny day. Not a cloud in the sky. The sea is a little bit tumultuous. You've got some waves going on, so there's some <clears> rocking to the ship. You can hear creaking as. The ship moves back and forth. The sails are full of wind as you travel towards Buckland. Um, and it's just a, it's all in all a fairly nice day. So, Jack, you come out, and right as you come out, also Arlo is like right behind you coming out as you the two of you come out onto the deck of the ship together. Cool. Can I... This is like your usual sailing vessel, like you picture in any of the movies, right? Yeah. With the big cargo net things that go up the uh-huh, sides. Uh-huh. Can I climb one of them and get kind of a higher vantage point to see down into the middle of the crowd where they're sure, all standing sure around? Sure, you can. I would, I would like to do that. Roll athletics to see how quickly you do that. Not quickly. <laughs> oh, I got a minus one athletics. A two. A two? It take. It is difficult. It is difficult going as you try to you make your way up the. Uh, make your way up this cargo net. It's rather slow. Come on, Jeremiah, move that fat body. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Get your Arlo, is there anything you're trying to do? Uh, I want to sneakily get as close as I can to see what's going on. Okay, and you're super sneaky already, so you you pull up right behind uh, a dish a greasy dishwasher who's up there who seems completely out of place. (laughs) Hey, cool beans! (laughs) With all these orc people, there's a greasy dishwasher right behind them. All right, so I'm like, I'm like. Concealed. I'm hidden behind like a, a dishwasher. Sure. Yeah. You're you're just passing without a trace. So you're kind of okay. wisping behind. I'll say you're like wisping behind the mast of this ship, looking out. Cool. Okay. And over now, everyone can hear you know this yelling, this shouting, um, as Talador says, "God, you know one of your number one jobs is checking this ship for stowaways. 
I got half a mind to toss you in the ocean right now. Gus trying to explain himself, uh, but Gus not doing a very good job of explaining himself. Just like our our like, <laughs> yeah. finger guns abound. Yeah, <laughs> and so like um, me me as a gnome and knowing Gus' predicament and stuff, like I I feel for this guy. Okay, um, and you can also say, uh, or you can, Grim, you can see through the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish you could see Bryce's <laughs> hand gestures. The ring um, of hands. But, uh, Grim, you can see, you can't see very good this creature, this kinku looking creature on the front, in front of them, who looks very much like Burb. You, you, don't, you didn't see any other kinku creatures. Um, but you can see very well what's happening with Talzar's legs and Guh. Guh is, he is tr- doing hand motions, trying to explain, you know, he's, he's doing his book. Motion. He's trying to explain that, um, and he's just gunning all over the place. And Talzar is very fed up. She's not understanding. Uh, she uh, have, has obviously already displayed kind of a distaste for this creature, at least his stupidity. Uh, she keeps him around for his usefulness, and but she she's the crew in general has displayed already that this creature is irritating to them. So she says, "God, just." Shut your mouth! And she, you see her big leather boot just kick go right in the face. And as that happens, like you can, see, he lets out a go, and then he hits the ground, and his face turns toward uh, you, the crowd. And you can see like known blood leaking out of his nose and out of his his mouth as he's laying there, not moving. Uh, when that happens, I kind of. I, my hand is going up toward the, the orc near me, mm-hmm. but then, like, I kind of think better, or Grim thinks better yeah. of it, Hans thinks better of yeah. it, and, like, uh, goes to pull his hand down and uh, says loudly enough in the hopes of getting the captain's attention, Captain Talazar! <sighs> Sorry, I need to find my stat sheets. <coughs> see how well you say Talzar as you hear. flick your greasy hair out of your face <laughs> into uh, someone else's face. Talzar, sticks to the horse arm. If it were not for um, what I'm about to say, she might have heard you. But there is an orc mage speaking to her at this very same time as you go to raise your voice, and the orc mage is saying, "That's that is one of the creatures we were looking for. Please." Okay. Give us one of the... Get, get, go back to sailing your boat. We must investigate this bird creature. <clears throat> but she she doesn't turn to hear your voice as she's listening to this orc. Do I hear that? You do. I turn into Grim, <laughs> and I punch the orc near me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I need to mark this stuff down. So, visually, yeah, this greasy dishwasher... Becomes a much bulkier <laughs> <laughs> like doubles in size, basically, just like cocoons out of himself. Just, just, but grim with like not reverting to normal. Still grim with the mm-hmm. the mask hidden, so nobody knows. Yeah, you guys, talk, you guys talk through that real quick because I've got to uh, map this out a little bit. <laughs> the the coat he's wearing billows out of. <laughs> yeah. And the Jack punch. and Arlo are already at the lifeboat, just lowering, to <laughs> shaking their. <laughs> at this point, shame. though, shame. At this point, too, uh, she was uh, a fan. Por- boat. <laughs> <laughs> Porky comes up uh, behind Arlo or behind Jack, and he Porky like tugs on your robes a little bit and says, I, "What I'm is?" Not- I'm not Jack. I mean, yeah, Jeremiah. Yeah. But he's he knows what you look like. Oh, okay, yeah, y'all, true, y'all true. came in Jack together. What is going on here? Uh, there seems to be a crowd gathered around the body of a kinku. I can't see well enough, or I don't think. Did I ever roll perception? Uh, n- oh, he's not. You're on the net. I'm sorry. He didn't come up behind you. Porky just comes up out of this de- oh, cargo hold. You're I thought you on top of. The I net. thought you meant like it literally took this long with my roll of two that he just. Oh, he climbed up. up behind you? No, like, I, I, he got there as I was about to start climbing or whatever. Oh, no, you're you're on that net, so, um... No. He saw you needed some help. Okay. <laughs> Render aid. So, I'm sorry, he does not say anything to you. Do I see him? Can I make a quick perception? Yeah, you see, yeah, you see him coming up. Okay. Sure. 
Can I make a quick perception check of what's in the middle of the crowd? Um, yeah, of course you can. Sure. Okay. That's a 24. You see it is obviously Burb. Okay. It is obviously Burb. Burb, you, Burb is laying on the very front of the ship. Uh, there's one crew member near him, possibly the man who's from the crow's nest, because you can see there's nobody in the crow's nest up there. He must have spotted this early in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> uh, Talazar is standing there next to a, a guz small body with blood leaking out of his face. Uh, and what you what is very alarming is that you can see that there is a trail of bird blood from his body leading up the front of the ship and kind of onto the point of the whatever you call that pointy piece on the front of a ship. The, the long, prow. The the prow. What whatever the long that long cylindrical wood piece is. Um, the steam. And you can see that the blood kind of goes down and there's this trail of blood leads into the mug of Winifred. Who was the, on the front of that ship with a Winifred statue? She's holding that mug out, um, and you can see that's kind of where it looks. He's like he dragged himself out of there and onto the front of the ship, and he's laying there. It's not like it's not like you know he's gushing blood, but Burb, there's a, a kind of a you yeah. can see it with your the, the small. He trail has of been bleeded. Yes, um, and Talazar standing there over him as an orc mage is is stepping up toward. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna hop down to the approaching pork. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll say that this is kind of happening as Grim is making the decision, as Grim is hearing what he heard and making the decision to punch. Sink the boat. Maybe. Okay. What do you say to him, Jackward? What did he Jack. say to me? He asked what was going on. Uh, it would appear that. Burb is collapsed in the middle of the deck. Burb, he has been gone quite a while. Do you think he's all right? Uh, I see a trail of blood. It doesn't look good, but it appears that he made it where he is now on his own. Oh, oh, that's one tough little. That's one tough little bird. It seems. <laughs> I suppose so. Ah, uh, I. Oh, God, Grim is... And then I suppose it was... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear the... <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. uh, as you say that, it's a... Uh, Pork says, Well, I guess it's time to party. <laughs> and he like... He, he, he <laughs> By your hand motions, it looked like you were pulling up a shot. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> and, uh, he stands up, and as he stands up, uh, he, you, he. He turned. actually pulls out a turkey leg and two sausage legs. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he starts swinging them around like nunchucks. He turns into Misiko, uh, and Misiko stands up and pulls his big uh, pokesy trident off his back and is ready, prepared to fight. Um, I just want to say that's an intimidating name for a trident. Like if somebody's running pokesy. at me with a a trident with the name Pokesy, I'm worried. Okay. <laughs> oh bother! Come on, Poxy. <laughs> it's about to be. <laughs> uh, I guess we need to establish this boat is, we'll say, like sixty feet wide. Uh, and what length did we decide on last time? Three hundred. Three hundred feet long. That's fine. I'm sure that's we're probably maybe. I'm Who's willing to go with it. Who's listening to let us know we're wrong? <laughs> hey. um, and so let's see on the on the area of where people are at. Um, we'll call this thing, that's the back there. Uh, and meet because back there. Alright, so from back to front, um, we're going to start behind the mast. So kind of close to the middle of the boat, uh, but a little off to the right is Misiko and Jack standing next to one another. About 10 or 20 feet ahead of them is Arlo who we're saying, I'm going to say, is peeking out from behind the mast, okay. looking at all these things happening. Very close to being in front of him is Grim, who is punching the third orc from the left. Still going, haven't stopped in, yet. Yeah, still. <laughs> Just the Hulkbuster oh. scene from Age of Ultron, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's a line of eight orc soldiers between you and three orc mages. And then there is Talzar. Uh, excuse me. The two there's two orc mages in front of the line of eight. This the one in the middle has stepped out towards Talzar, Gah, 
uh, and Burb laying on the ground. So does that make sense what you guys are looking at? I'll, I'll show you a little visual representation of what's going on, just the placement of human beings. Where's Talazar? Talazar is up here. Talazar, right. Burb, Gah, Orc Mage, Orc Mage, Orc Mage, Eight Orc Boys, Grim, Arlo, Jack, and Misika. Okay. At this point, everyone else on the deck has cleared, that has cleared there? out. That right there? Yeah. That used to be you. Oh, okay. That was you on the cargo net. Gotcha. All right, so when it comes to combat here, there's a lot of combat happening. I don't want to bog us down completely in the like minutia of like two feet versus three feet of where you're at or whatever. We're going to... We're going to try to make this process as expedient as possible. Uh, if something was, is within reason, as far as distance, we'll say that you know, that's possible. If something is not within reason, we'll just say no. And that's how we'll move along there. Right, since jump we have... to the prow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I grab the front of the boat and tip it over. <laughs> okay, so combat has begun. Everybody roll initiative. Holy mackerel. Wow. <laughs> That's a oh eighteen. Well, I rolled a thirteen. Two. Oh boy, eight. The whole eight, mind you. Here the whole eight, brother. Would you believe I just rolled two nat ones in a row? <laughs> hey, we gonna take that. And then a nat twenty. <laughs> I, I'd say it's not looking good, but I mean, like averages wise, like yeah, we're doing all right. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. We'll Stop. try to find a way to fill the air here as we I'm set up combat. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I just like playing D and D. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. D and D is fun. I mean, it's. I would love if you know people tuned in and we had an audience for this, but also just being able to play D and D is a whole lot of fun. The last game we played, we just hit like three hundred hours a piece playing D and D. Yeah, it's pretty great. That's a lot of hour. It's a lot of hour. We've also been playing for two years now, almost. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. We started August of seventeen. Mm-hmm. And we're still not pros. No, but we're getting there. I don't know if there is a pro. We still have to look at. There are legends. The rule book to see stuff like advantage and things like that. <laughs> Shut up, Bryce. We uh, play it loose. All right, what'd you guys roll for initiative? Eighteen. Ooh, my voice got incorrect. Eight. The whole <laughs> Eight. The mighty two. The mighty two. All right, so... The two of terror. Now, are they all surprised? Um... That one was. <laughs> <laughs> he was surprised. I would imagine I, I... I forget how... Bryce just said we have to look up <laughs> things. I don't know... If they're surprised, they don't take turns in the first round of combat. Right. I think this orc... The orc, so I, the way I did it, I separated the the four, the eight orcs into two groups of four, and they rolled initiative. The group that he's a part of will be surprised. How about that? Those four, I think that makes sense. Because by the time that you know the the ones around them, the one you're punching, they'd be surprised. The rest of them might, you know, reasonably be like, "Hey, there's a guy punching our dudes." Yeah. So I think six seconds. The one with the the one with the fist in his sinus cavities, he's pretty much surprised. Should be but he's also quite aware of the situation. Now. <laughs> he, he has been made aware. So we'll say those four are he's, surprised. He's now up to date. Yep. Um, Surprise, mother lover. All right, so, yeah, orcs one through four are surprised. Let me work my way down. Surprise. Surprise. Supplies. <laughs> Disguise. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> uh, that was my pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> You all die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's an Keith ominous. Cry. That's so true. Keith, Keith will cry. I'm sure. That's enough. <laughs> Not just because I can't think of it anymore. Jack now lies. that I, huh? Jack lies. Or the orcs lie. The orc lies. Jack don't lie. Grim's lie. I don't think Jack actually does lie. He does not. He skirts around the truth an awful lot. Oh, yes. <laughs> he loves to yes, skirt. <laughs> Dancing all around that truth. <laughs> you seen the memes that are like, um, nobody, colon, 
uh, the bowling alley television when you get a stroke. Oh, yeah, those, <laughs> I really enjoyed those couple days when those were popular. There's memes. the one with the four bears on, like, the podium of the <laughs> multicolored. I just imagine that's Jack dancing around the truth. Yeah, those, the bowling alley screen memes was such a weird, oh, man, I love this. So what accurate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, combat is beginning. So, the <coughs> orcs, we're going to say, I, I think it makes sense, Grim, especially since they're occurring before you in the order, but you, especially because you rolled poorly on your dex thing, or on your, your, your initiative, I'm going to say that those, <coughs> yeah, I think they're, I think they are all surprised. That does make sense. In the six seconds, you know, of combat situation, especially, I think it's harder that, to reconcile it because your role is lower as far as in the initiative. But it does make sense that you've punched this person. It would make sense that it would take about six, maybe six seconds for them to realize what has gone on here. Uh, so, roll to punch this guy, I guess. Or wait. Yeah, I would go last. Yeah. So, yeah, you we'll, we'll, have to roll that punch for the later on the initiative. So, there... So, at this point, the orc, <coughs> the orcs on the right side of the boat are all turning towards what's going on. Uh, Guh is flat, like, barely moving. He's twitching a little bit on the ground. Uh, Jack, it's your turn, sir. Okay. Are there any mages near me? No, they are... Between, between you and the three mages are a line of orc soldiers is there stuff on the deck that i can kind of stealth around sure they're like, like yeah boxes and, and crates and stuff right. like that they it'll be tough for you to get through the line of orcs to pack because you're going to be passing through their space they're kind of you know spread out all the way across this boat um but you can try all right i wish to try to stealth towards the front i want to get within melee range of the mages because i don't want to have them at distance to me okay it will take more than just your movement speed so you yeah. probably have to dash That'll if, work. as your bonus action i guess because you're a rogue boy yeah okay roll stealth rune for me that is a 16 passive perception remind me again is eight a plus. plus proficiency only if they're proficient in perception right and then also you know, I don't know. Intelligence? No, wisdom. Wisdom. Okay, so what do you roll? 16. You are stealth boy. <laughs> You're unseen. So we'll say that they are, we'll say again that they are surprised, they're not paying attention, that you can go around the right side of the, the all these guys and kind of slip between the last orc and the wall of the ship on, secretly. Mm. Uh, we'll say you throw a, throw a rock over to the other way. They all keep looking that way as you go around. Marble. But they're all yeah. I have my bag of infinite marbles. Yeah, they're all they're all looking towards the grim. So you're able to get around, um, and you can get within range of the closest orc mage. Um, that is, he's very close to the line of orcs. You're not going to make it all the way to the forward orc mage who is with the Talazar Burb Guh little cluster up there. Mm. Um, but you can. If they're in a triangle, if you're if your orc mages are in a triangle, kinda. Can I use the my? Bottom right I end. used a bonus action dash. Can I use my action to dash and get to the other one and hide I think your over action there? would have to be your stealth pull. Two right. stealth. All right. That'll work then. Okay. So you are you can certainly get within range of the one, but also you're not going to be attacking on this round anyway. So you can get mm -hmm. as close as you want, or you can wait and move to. Yeah. You'll be able to get to wherever you want in the next turn. I just didn't know if it was going to require a bonus action to get to the other one as well. No, you are within 30 feet of all these mages okay. now. All right, then I will wait. Okay. Uh, that is Jack's turn. Uh, Burb, you can see, is breathing, but just he is just he is unconscious and just barely breathing. Mm -hmm. uh, Talazar is going to turn and say, What is this commotion here? Everybody calm down. There's no need to have a, have a battle on my ship. Uh, and there's a need. <laughs> yeah. Let's say I'm gonna roll a perception roll on Talazar to try to, uh, I guess, use her stature to intimidate these soldiers to not be messing. Would that be an intimidation roll? Intimidation roll. What I say? Perception. perception. Yeah, I don't. I'm sorry. <gasps> I'm getting all bound up, y'all. They're gonna the receive their own fear. Yeah. Um. So she rolls a nine. 
Sorry, guys, I got lots of papers. Now that I got mm. some proper money flowage, I could definitely get to work on that table now. Hey. Oh, yeah, true. We could have us a serious gaming table. Shoot. We need cup holders in every position that can hold the Circle K, Polar Pop, Big Go. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's like a cup minutes. holder that's a foot wide. What we need is a, a kiddie pool underneath full of ice <clears throat> and water that we can just leave our feet in. <laughs> uh, anyway, so Talazar's intimidation of these soldiers actually does work. Um, she looks at all the, all these the, the orc soldiers and the orc mages. They're not intimidated in the way that they're, they're groveling in fear, but they do hesitate. They instead of saying like this is we do what we want, they hesitate to try to decide: Are we going to destroy this ship? Or what's going to happen here? And they're they're hesitating. So on their next on every all the orcs next turn, they'll have disadvantage on saving throws. I want to give them that that they're indecisive. So, um, did Grim get off that punch, or was that no, like the dis- huh? No, okay, it's, it's happening now. It's it's because okay. of the bullet time. Yeah, <laughs> because of the way it, initiative works. All right, I didn't know if that started the fight or it started our initiative. He will be attacking them first yeah, before they get to attack him, and they are surprised. Surprise. Yes, when we they yeah. are surprised. Yeah, they're surprised. Nice. So, uh, Arlo, it is your turn. It is my goings. I would like to use my stealthiness that I still got. Okay. And I want to just get as close as I can to where Burb is at. Okay. Like, I want to get, like, right up on top of him if I can. Sure. So, um, you will I'm not be able to get that me. far if you're trying to... You can't stealth in... You can't bonus action dash. like. He's exactly. already stealth, though. Right. Yeah, I'm already, like, super stealth. Yeah. You are stealth, so you, will, you can go your... You can, if you want to dash, I guess... 30 or your your do your dash make it 60 feet you will be uh you're gonna have to go around if it makes sense around to the left of mm-hmm. these orky boys so 60 feet isn't going to get you right quite there but it'll get you within 30 feet of okay. bird next time yeah, i imagine there's like some cargo and sure. like some other stuff on deck like just getting getting around yeah do i Mission need impossible to, stop do i need to roll a, a stealth or what um we'll just i'll keep your stealth roll from earlier like your your pass without the trace there's is Highly unlikely that you're going to roll anything that they're going to be able to see you in with a plus 10, plus whatever else you got. Okay. Plus 10, plus 4. Yeah, it's going to be highly unlikely that you will be seen. So I'm, I'm keeping your original stealth roll. They do not see you as you pass without a trace getting close to Bird. So that's me for now. Like, Arlo is, is like, he is completely 100% focused. Like, I, I just, I got to get to Bird. Laser focused on Bird. I got to get to Bird. Okay. Burb is my home skillet. All right, Grim, do your thing. I'm gonna punch this man. Punch him up. Eighteen. Come Eighteen out. will hit. Hmm. Will uh, yep, that'll hit too. That has a twenty-five. Uh, what's the? There it is. Okay. Uh, so that's eleven for the first. And you're punching the same orc twice. Yes. Okay. Um, I imagine like back of the head for the the right-handed punch to the back of the head and then left handed punch to like the ribs okay. um, 11 for the first one and 13 for the second one give me just a second to 24. write all these guys up 23rd um, you're punching number 3 third from the left Yeah. so uh, you punch him, and how much damage? You said 24 total. 24 total. You punch him. Your first punch to the back of the head like opens the back of his head up with your necrotic damage, and like orc skin f- falls off of his head, and it pulls back with your knuckles. Your next punch punches into his kidney. You can feel his organs explode on the inside, and he just slumps down dead. Cool. That um, is a mighty punch right <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm also gonna cast spiritual weapon as a bonus action. Okay. How far away are the first set? The first two mages. They are within ten feet of you at this point. Oh, how far? Or no, well, sorry. The one there's one directly in front of you, ten mm-hmm. feet away. The other one would probably be twenty feet away. My original target was the one by Burb. Okay. So, oh, you want to get the? You want to go farther? So you go. Well, beyond. no. I I assumed he was much farther away. Is he within sixty feet? Is he within sixty feet? He probably, based on the math that I've done for the rest of them, he'd probably be within 60 feet. Yeah, yeah. so um, 
Yeah, I'll cast a spiritual weapon on him. Okay. Uh, it's in the form of a hammer. When you cast a spell, you can make a melee attack against a creature within five feet of the weapon. So I'm going to do, I'm going to attack him. But where's my, I don't know my modifiers for this. You look at his HPs. Um, will a 17 hit? Yes. Cool. <coughs> it does 1d8 worth of... Poop. Okay. Oh boy. So six total damage to the man. Six total. Swinging, swinging uh, horizontally for his chest. Um, as he gets hit with a spiritual weapon and he's turning around to see one of his men get slumped over, he says, "The rest of them are on board. Kill them all." <clears throat> okay. <laughs> you respond. <laughs> Maytag responds. Okay. Um. It's all right. Great. So now the. Orcs one through four are surprised. The mages are surprised, so they're not going to have a turn. And so now it is back to orcs five through eight, and they will be having a turn. Um, they're going to close. Wait, wouldn't they all have a turn? Huh? They, we haven't reached the other. So you, uh, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, we haven't reached the first two step groups turn. We but we did reach the five through eights turn. Uh, so they are going to close. You being the only person they can see, that is. An enemy to them, um, they're going to close in around you. So orc number five is going to come in, and then they're going to kind of circle swing. around you a little bit and kind of swing around. So um, <clears throat> if you can imagine now at this point a right angle of orcs on the. So imagine if you're at the the mast, starting at the left side of the boat. There's four orcs, or, orcs going across, and then going down. There's four orcs going down. And Grim is at the point of that angle. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, and Grim, this is bad news, but you're the only person they can see, so they're going to do some attacking. Um, let me roll that up. Joe Swanson. <laughs> okay, so the first one is going to try to great axe you. He do it. Ten. Will ten hit? No. Nope. You're able to dodge that one. What about a 19? Would you be surprised if I said no? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hit? No, it does hit. Okay. <laughs> All right, so a 19. Surprise! I'm going to see how many hits we get on you with great axes, because okay. they're all they're all wielding great axes <coughs> trying to mow oh, you down. Okay. One. Okay, sorry, you're counting one. I thought you were saying, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I, have, I have something for this. Uh, that one will also hit. That's a 24. Not well repellent. Oh, boy. Uh, that's another hit. That's going to be a 23. Another hit. That's going to be an unnatural 20. Ooh. But the other ones can't reach you. So that's that was 4. 8d6. Okay. Wait. Is it 2d6? For no, it's, it's, no, it's no, sir. It's, D12. Yeah. Yeah. it's, it's big that's boy. Yeah. Weird. Well, no. 2d6. Technically in D&D, 2d6 is stronger than a d12. Yeah. A higher For average. So. Yeah. yeah. True. Okay. Uh, the, the last three, so we've I've attacked you five times, right? There's three more left to attack. They're all going to pull out a javelin because they can't reach you with their axe based on the way they formed. Javelin. Um. Giblet. Don't you say giblet? Uh, <laughs> well, don't a, summon him. Well, a twelve won't hit. Uh, that meets AC. My AC is twelve. We we usually I. Most of the time we go with the attacker. That's our normal house yeah. rule outside of this. But, but I've been it, thinking about that, like. In Dungeon Boys, though... Does a 12... Would a 12 hit the AC of 12? Is it 12 and above, or is it 13 and above? It I think it would have to go over. But I wanted to go ahead and say that. So you're, that is not a hit. We're going to call it that. With AC, it has to be over, not not a meet. Yeah. But secondly, Dungeon Boys house rule, I want to give the advantage to the player. Okay. Does that make sense? It's like house rules elsewhere, whenever we play alone, we can still do the attacker, hey, but I want to okay do... With yeah, that. yeah. All right, so two more attacks. A, that's a 23. That'll hit... <clears throat> And a miss. So you got hit with one javelin and f- five great axes. Four, four, great, four axes. great axes. Oh, bother. So let's we'll Hold we'll yourself. talk about what it looks like in a second. Um, I was gonna try to go with my gut on the dice and help you out. Two and two, one in each shoulder and one in each <laughs> each kidney. Okay, so the javelin damage. goes for the forehead. <laughs> it's just Thirteen. It's like a unicorn. You, are, will you count this up, Zenith, for me? Uh, yep. Thir- Thirteen. Eleven. Wait, oh, oh, hold up. So 24. Hang on. Yeah. yeah, not, hang on, because this thing's weird. Gotcha. All right, so I got that. 
24, yeah, and 20. then 20, the so 5. Okay. That was 3, and then plus 9. So 24 plus 3 plus 9. And then we'll do some javelins. Oh, boy. We're going javelin. Uh, one javelin. Yeah, it was one javelin. So add add a measly seven damage to that. Ooh. So in this attack, Grim takes 45 damage. So what happens is those first two are pretty big, meaty swings. So you take one, one the far left orc takes his axe and just baseball style swings it into your gut. The other one comes down on a shoulder and plants the axe in your shoulder uh, the one after that kind of barely grazes the top right above your knee. Um, okay. And then the f- axe behind that just barely grazed, grazes across your chest. He doesn't quite have the reach on it. And then a javelin comes through and sticks into your hip. But as you move a little bit, it falls out. All right. Oh, boy, we've been recording an hour. Hmm. We'll, we'll have to deal with this in the next episode in a second, but we're going to go through another round of combat. Um, yeah. Whew, that was a rough one. Um, <laughs> all right, so that's all the uh, the they were orcs. retaliating for just like punching the bejesus out of their homeboy there. Yeah, true. Um, this could turn into a Bartram moment though. So, oh, dude, be careful. Grim, take that, take back that javelin damage. Okay, what was back out? It was a seven? seven because those guys didn't attack you. Sorry, it was just the front four. The front four got you with axes. They attacked you with axes. I I messed up the ordering wrong. Those back, the <laughs> just like the old um, Prince of Persia things. Wait a minute, that's not right. Yeah. Okay. So, apologies for that. Only four, but you did get the uh, those axe hits. They made a movie about that, didn't they? Prince of Persia. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty good. So well, I actually see like grim. the guy where the javelin goes and picks it up and like slaps a little bandaid on you. Like, <laughs> sorry, man. My <laughs> bad. It actually means grim. The last javelin or the last. Axe damage was nine, so back out another nine. Because there were, f- you got one axe off of him as well. So you really should only have taken three axe damage, three axe hits. Okay. My apologies again. I apologize big time. Goofed it up, DM. Ah! <laughs> All right, so Play this, you big dummy. <laughs> All right, at this point, um, it has been a few more seconds, but Guh is still. At this point, you can, if you were to look at Guh, he would uh, <coughs> cough like a just a clot of blood out of his mouth at this point. Yeah, he would go uh, a clot of blood, but that's all that's all he does. Next in the line would be Jack Law. Okay, do um, it. I'm gonna uh, continue sneaking up behind the. I take it everybody's facing toward Grim at this point, correct? Yes. All right. So the orc mage was behind Talazar. Mm-hmm. It, it is now behind her since she's facing the other way, correct? We'll now be in front. So Talazar was a... Ta- so, so if I go all the way up there, then Talazar is closer to me than the Orc Mage is? Where are you trying to go? Are you going above the bird yeah, cluster? Yeah, I'm going all the way up. Up yeah. here? Okay, yeah. so yes, the Orc would now be behind <coughs> Talazar for me. Okay. Talazar would now be looking toward the Orc Mage at this point. Kind of. Okay. I like kind of. That's just nebulous enough. I was confused as where everybody was. All right. um, Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. For some reason, I was thinking, like, these were the two orc mages, and then there was one up here talking to Talazar, who was standing here. And now I was over here. No, uh -uh. Talazar was always ahead of everybody. Yeah, all right. Um, Oh, crap. Now I don't know what I want to do. I didn't really want to attack her. You you could attack the orc mage. I have to pass Talazar. That's true. What would be so wrong about that? I didn't want to attack her yet. Because I wanted to get things sorted out before... I mean, I'm saying that you don't have to attack Talazar. If you, you could go past her to attack Opportunity of attack. She wouldn't have any reason to attack you. Why not? Well, she doesn't know you. I don't think. You yeah, don't she doesn't know you. you. I mean... At this point, she's got a bunch of army people attacking people on her boat. Like she, who, I mean, I, I'm not saying she won't, but I'm not saying that she doesn't. But she's to. not part of the army, is she? No, she she's oh. just an orc. Yeah, she's just okay a, yeah. of the race of orcs. She's she's a captain. She is different than these other All emotionless right. creatures. Oh okay, yeah, I thought this was like a military vessel or something. No, it's like it's a cargo ship. She's okay. just an. A, she's just a. Then orc I'm person. gonna sprint on past her and. Hit that mage in the back of the head. All right. How far is he from me? Uh, based on your last movement, I N- guess. Then um, I mean, if I'm not, if 
he's not up there, then I'm not going to go all the way to the front of the ship and then head back. I'm just going to shoot straight towards him. Yeah, so he's like so from the beginning of my team. Sure. All right. Then I'm going to run up there and slap at him with my knife. <laughs> <laughs> okay, roll a... Uh, roll, uh, knife slap. Roll knife slap. Last time you did Nat that. 20. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Nat 20. All right, great. All right, so I'm doing Booming Blade as well. This is the one that just got... So you're actually running past Grim's spiritual weapon too at this point. Because yeah. this is the same one that got attacked by the hammer. So I double all the damage dice I roll? Uh, yep. <laughs> I don't know about cantrips, but yeah. Sure. You would roll the damage... You wouldn't roll any of your spell damage twice. If your dagger does... If your dagger does 1d4 or whatever damage, you would roll 2d4. Everything else gets rolled once. Like, you wouldn't double your... the you If you have, like... I don't double Booming Blade or Sneak Attack? Uh, no, you definitely no. wouldn't double Sneak Attack. No. It's just... It, a critical hit is just... You've done a really good job of putting your knife where you want it to go. And so it'd, yeah. just, it'd just be the damage of the actual weapon or attack that you're using. It seems like sneak attack would be the one that would increase. How does sneak um, attack work again? It's it's basically like its own critical kind of thing. Like if you're stealthed or if you have advantage or if your target is alone or if you have a ally within five feet of your target. And what are the benefits of that? You gain 1d6 plus another d6 for each two levels above one that you are. And me being a level... Six. Yeah, you you wouldn't you wouldn't double that. The, okay. the, the critical hit is just I, now if you're on the <laughs> listening, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's just it, it is a a commentary on how well you use your knife in this situation. Like instead of stabbing him in the shoulder, you got him in the neck, and so it dealt twice the damage that a knife would normally do. Okay. I think so. You would double your knife damage and add everything else that you want to do. Gotcha. All right. So then it's. 48 plus 3d6 plus my modifier. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. You said 4d8 plus 3... Yeah. No, sorry, I just want to try to say, if, even if you rolled the least you could possibly roll, would this thing survive? <laughs> we'll see. No, I forgot you were attacking a mage, too. All right, go ahead. So... Ooh. <laughs> yeah, you can help, we, can help oh. you, we can help you count it up if you want. I got it. So and as remember, as, as Bryce is doing, hold up. What you roll it all twice? Really? Yeah. I thought um, hmm, maybe I'm for, not. For example, if you score if you score a critical hit with a dagger, roll two d four for the damage rather than one d four, and then add your relevant ability modifier. If the attack involves other damage dice, such as from the rogue sneak attack feature, you roll those dice twice as well. Oh bother! <laughs> <laughs> oh baby! Sorry about that, folks. That is oh. very helpful to Bryce. Um, oh. As Bryce comes in for the attack and jams this dagger into the back of this orc mage's head through his, the hood of his robe, uh, Talazar says, What in the god is going on on my sheep? Give me a pin. <laughs> so, it only works on initial damage, though. So, I, all initial damage is oh, right. doubled. Nice. Potentially. Yeah, we're going to have to end this after this round of combat. <laughs> um, it may end. By itself. <laughs> of its own volition. It may just be over. Yeah. <laughs> just Jack presses his knife through the head of this mage, but it just travels around the rest of the ship, pushing the knife <laughs> with the mage head on it. Just. <laughs> Are you using your cool magic knife? Whistling happens. No, just my usual cleaver. Oh, yeah, the cleaver. Cleaver. Oh, so you're just chopping this guy in the back of the head. I was yeah. picturing a stab. I forgot about the cleaver. Jack appears from the shadow. Orc dies. <laughs> 65 <laughs> damage. Yeah, so you... So, 65? <laughs> good lord. Split the head down to the shoulders. <laughs> yeah. So it was 8d4 plus 6d6. Oh, wait, I didn't add my... Uh... It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because but wait, there's more. This, plus 7. This orb mage is dead. So 72 damage. How do you kill But it? I'm not done yet. Huh? How do you kill it? He's dead. How do you do it? Uh, Imagine his head as a potato. <laughs> How do you peel it? I peel his head. Pinkerton to lose a single tear. <laughs> um, 
I'm gonna go like a vertical chop, yeah. sort of like here-ish, right, like the, right, the, right the, below the, right below the where the neck meets the back. Yeah. So like, I'm trying to split his spine in half. And you do vertically. <laughs> you butterfly. So unzip whatever, him. <laughs> his leather underneath his robe, he's wearing like this leather kind of armor. And your I don't know your, cle- <laughs> your your cleaver slices through robe leather flesh and spine like butter. It's not a this is not a knife of a slice slash that you have to pull out vertically. This slash goes down and it keeps going down until your knife is at your side and has left this orc's body, and his spine is split and just organs and from long, pout to pucker <laughs> and everything is like coming out through the back of this thing and all you can hear him say. Oh! <laughs> As you cut him, and like a little bit of a poof of flame comes out of his hands as you cut him, and then he like falls forward and lands directly on Talazar's feet. Boom. He's dead. <laughs> Somebody in the crowd yeah. is thinking, it's a butcher. Um, Burb, uh, also on the ground, just. He just makes a like a exhaling. He's, he's hurt. Jack has, up to this point, looked kind of uncomfortable through all of his other fights, yeah. but at this point. Killing the orc, he doesn't seem to... It, it's like he didn't even notice that he did it. Yeah, okay. I like it. <clears throat> Feels good. <laughs> um, Talazar turns and says, like... Talazar hasn't met Jack. He's only met Jeremiah, right? Yeah. She's only met oh, Jeremiah. I, I guess while I was stealth, I turned back into Jack before I emerged. <laughs> we'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, uh, a middle-aged kind of beer gut fellow <laughs> just emerged and murdered the crap out of this dude. Um, oh, that's a cool visual, though. Talazar is going to pull a fist back and say, like, There'll be no more slaughtering on my ship! And, like, goes to try to punch you in the face just knowing that you're, you're part of the issue. Like, she's just, she's down to brawl at this point. <laughs> Um, so she's rolling back to give you a little punch in the head. Uh, will a 23 hit you? You've done all this to convince me that she was not going to attack me. I could have used my disengage action. I wasn't trying to convince you she wouldn't attack you. I was trying to understand that, like, I was trying to let you know that she's not a hostile creature to you at rest. Yeah, a I was 23 trying... will hit me. Okay. I'm so, I apologize. This punch is not going to kill you or harm yeah. you very much. I'm going to use it's not going to kill my you. uncanny dodge reaction to half whatever incoming damage it gives. Okay, you take two damage. So it'll be like a... Yeah, so she's going for your face and you duck down and he... Me. Yeah, she hits you in the shoulder a little bit. The glancing And blue. she turns and says, What is going on here? Who are you? I... Jack? <laughs> I Jack. That's not quite enough information <laughs> for me. You asked who what's, I am. What's going on? That I don't know. One of our friends is dead, and all of these orcs are surrounding him. I don't know what started this fight. Do you? <laughs> your what? Who is your friend? Me. Did I see you? Have you you punched already? Yeah, yeah. But I was up towards the front of the ship, wasn't I? Mm. Yeah, yeah, weird timey things. The only reason you got to the front of the ship is because you saw me punching the guy. Okay. Yeah. So essentially, like you got so All the right. way it guys works in in uh, initiative is like you saw Grim about to do Grim stuff, okay. and everybody kind of positioned themselves. The rep kind of. I know exactly why this fight started. <laughs> yeah. And so she says, "Yo, this creature is your friend." Uh, yes. The Kinku there. I, we can't be killing army people on this boat. This has to stop. Well, it's not gonna. Why are they all gathered around him? They were, they're claiming that he. they were looking for this creature. They're also looking for three... Oh, God. <laughs> they're looking for you, too. Uh, perhaps. Uh, have, have they found anything about the scratches, though? Surely they were searching for something along those lines. They seem to be unconcerned about that. We've got more things to deal with now. <laughs> As the the, the, the I, we can't have a completely long conversation yeah. with, then during combat. But I'm just saying, like the scratches were on the front of the boat, and he was found like on that little tip. They were the found brick. like on the side. The like, scratches were on the back. back. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Captain's quarters isn't at the front of the boat. It's at the back no, of the yeah, boat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm totally turned around here. <laughs> you guys are at the front of the boat. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> Oh, we gotta get off this boat. <laughs> yeah, we do. I don't know what stern and bow oh, and prow and. Okay. Um, I know so that was Talazar's turn. She's she's punched you, 
But now she's like, wait, you, you're part of the people. You're you're part of the group they were looking for on my ship. I'll let that punch slide. And then she, yeah, and so, so she's she's now contemplating. She's trying to figure out what she's gonna do. Arlo, your turn, sir. Mm. And eventually we'll get to the end of this round of combat and we'll <laughs> stop the episode. I'm using whatever movement I can to get like up to Bird. You're there, Beard. Um, but you are right. The but you're right beside Captain Talazar as well. I, honestly, I don't care That's at this fine. point. Well, I, I got wanna... In a world of imagination, I must let you know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I am like, I am like getting ASAP over to so Burb. To Burb, imagine another triangle. Burb is at the top of this small triangle. You're all within five feet of each other. Burb, bottom left is Arlo. Middle is Talazar on the bottom, and then on the right is Jack. Okay. Who has no idea where he is? <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Jeremiah was always bad with directions. <laughs> how's, how's Burb looking? Bad. Dead. Burb's looking. He bad. is unresponsive. All right. He's got a giant. You can see a little bit of blood leaking out of his back, but you can't see any injuries on his front. I'm gonna take one of my my healing yeah, potions and I am just gonna like pour it down his throat. Okay. I'm I'm going for this. At so. How much healing does he get? Uh, he gets like the whole point. ten of healing. Okay, awesome. Like, we all have, like, a meerkat moment. We all just kind of, like, perk up and, like, look in a random direction. <laughs> and, like, we're like, we must progress the plot. And we all just, like, sprint off the side of the boat <laughs> and jump. No, start swimming for sure. <laughs> There's some plot happening. Um, so, Burb get <laughs> He looks up at you and he says, come on, friend. Bird, bird, hey, guys. hey, hang, hang, hang in there, buddy, hang in there. <laughs> what happened to me? I, I don't know. We're gonna try to get you out of here. Where am I? I you're still on, still on the boat, you're still on the boat, buddy. We're gonna get off of this boat here. Okay. <laughs> just, He's like laying there trying to gather himself. Just hang in there, man. We're gonna get you out of here. Who has Burb's sword? I have Burb's yeah. sword. Okay. Just I actually wanna. In like, planning for today, I realized about an hour and a half in of planning what was going to happen today, you know, within reason without realizing that Burb didn't have his sword and just suffice it to say that it really screwed things up. They did. I remembered that he didn't have his sword. There you go. So our, we are we are in the thick of this now. Yeah. All right. You are. So it, does, it doesn't look like battle is going to be stopped. It will be... I will say it was an action to give him that... to give him the potion. That's okay. That's okay. okay. But it doesn't look like battle will be stopped. I mean that's up to y'all. I mean there's there's a there's what always do you know of Grim. Think about <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, there's right. always a line. This ocean that leads, will burn. <laughs> that leads to peace. Or Just normally there is. On the shore of Buckland. Well, <laughs> that went bad. Camera pans around, the ocean's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um Yeah, what do you do with the rest of that turn, buddy? Alright, rest of that turn. How is Burb looking? How's he He looks a lot better. He looks way better? He's just now he's just very confused and surprised. Cool. Uh bonus action wise, I am going to reach into my pack and pull out his sword. Burb, you you might need this, buddy. We're in the middle of it thick here. He says, Thank you, friend. (laughs) He puts it on his back or on his side. And you can hear as he grabs it. You can hear, <laughs> and he's about to pull it out. Stick close, man. I feel like the we sound, don't want to lose you again. Stick close, buddy. The what? sound of the scream should change for like the situation or even oh. Bird's emotion. <laughs> no, I was thinking like the song, like ah, I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> so Burb has his sword back and he's attached it to his hip. Nice. Arlo, that will be the end of your turn. Yeah, grimly. All right, man. I'm gonna you know use you know some healing. I'm going to cast a third level uh, Cure Wounds upon myself. Okay. While he's rolling that, How I, just, are you looking, I want to be like, way? I just want to stand between Talazar and Burb. Okay. So. Gotcha. Large as life and twice as ugly. <laughs> you know, really kind of. Uh, I'm looking pretty dang dope. Okay. Honestly, not not that hurt. <laughs> That's fine. Um, and then I'm also... I I'm gonna, mad. <laughs> kinda, I'm a little mad. I'm going to cast uh, Spirit Guardians around me. Kind of just throw my arms out a little bit and then okay. cast it. Uh, i got to find that spell real quick. It's right there. You call forth spirits to protect you. They flit around you to a distance of 15 feet for the duration. If you are good or neutral, their spectral form appears angelic or fey. We'll just say uh, angelic. Uh, blah, blah, blah. An affected creature's speed is halved in the area, so there's no saving throw required for that. So all the orcs around me, they can only move about 15 feet. Okay. 
Uh, and when the creature enters the area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there, it must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, it takes 3d8 radiant or necrotic damage. It'll, it'll be radiant, because it's good. Okay. And you said that's when they enter? Uh, enter or start their turn. And the, there's a field? Sorry. 15 foot. 15 foot field. Okay, around you. Yep. Gotcha. So okay. literally... Like most of these creatures, six of yeah, the hawks. yeah, most of them are making these. So, at the start of their turn, they roll that. At the start of their turn, or when they enter it. Okay, so what spell? I guess when you create it, they've entered it. Spirit guardians. Uh, yeah, yeah, spirit guardians. Yeah. Wisdom, you say? Yeah, man. Let's say so. I rolled. Let's see. I rolled seventeen for one. That'll do. Five for the next one. That won't do. Sixteen for the next That'll one. That'll do. 17 for the next one. Good lord, these these orbs. All right, and then one more. A natural 20. So, was that two that failed or one? Was it two? Well, one of them had a nat 20, so he he definitely succeeded. And one of them one of them succeeded earlier, so. Yeah, then, I think I think it's only one that failed. Okay, um, gotcha. so the one that failed takes 11 damage and the others take <clears throat> half of that. Okay. 11 damage, you say? Yeah. He doesn't like that. And half of that, would, 11 would be... Five, 5 or 6. Damage. Yeah, we'll do 6. And then it lasts for 10... Yeah, 10 minutes. Alright, so... What do, what do these spirit guardians do? Do they hurt them in some way? or they, they, just, just, they just flit about. Okay. So the spirit <laughs> guardians like? appear. Angelic. They appear and the orcs just grab their heads. I imagine, like, the, oh, like, I imagine the fairies from Legend of Zelda. Like Ocarina of Time. Just the small balls. Just I'm with you. That'll work. All right. So as they Not grab their... Um, little naked babies with bow and arrows? No. Okay. So at the start of their turn Tell as well, you say? Mm -hmm. The start... At the start, right. they when, roll. They, when they start their turn in it, or whenever right, they're, they're rolling wisdom again. Okay. So a thirteen will not do. A natural twenty will do. A nineteen. Uh, yeah, that'll do. A ten is a fail. Mm -hmm. So one and one. Remember this: one and four fail. One, four, five. Uh, Fifteen. Yeah, yeah, it saves. Okay, so one, four, and five fail. So roll damage on that. Uh, 17. 17 damage? Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Big, All right, so big papa. four is dead. One is dead. Five is dead. It's a boxer moment. Hey. And then half that for the rest? <coughs> Not <Yeah>. yet. <laughs> Getting close. I think this is probably as close to Barsha as Grim can get. You said so half, half that for the rest? Yep. Half of 17 would be 8, or say 8. Ooh. Not feeling good, number two. Noise, number six. <laughs> are these weaker than the ones we fought outside Fark, or have we gotten... Y'all have gotten more powerful. We haven't leveled up since then, have we? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Leveled. The army has not quite caught up to these types of people. You know, most of the time, magical and powerful people are on their side. Yeah. They haven't quite caught up to you guys being against them. Uh, so, I mean, orc number... Magical. So, they're essentially... Three orcs now fall collapsed. Their their head they grab their heads and, and then fall down to the ground that collapsed. Was like sand speeder. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so that number two. Meets Wilhelm. So let's see. The second orc is still alive, barely clinging to life, and the sixth orc is alive, barely clinging to life. Um, so there are. Uh, there are only three left. No, four. Eight. There are four left. There are four orky boys left. Um, what they going to do? Don't, don't. No. Uh, so the second orc, is, he's going to, with whatever little strength he has left, he's going to try to have at thee with his axe again. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 15. Yeah. That'll hit. Um, he's going to have at thee with have that six damage. Testing. His weakness leads him to give you, to just not really connect. He goes at you with this one, but you're able to put up an arm and you take that axe in the in the forearm a little bit and it just doesn't hurt you so bad. Um, now it's time for some orc mages, one of which we are down. Um, the first orc mage who is directly in front of you, Grim, 
He is going to give you bad times, or at least try. Bad times. Um, he is going mm-hmm. to... Real bad. Hold on, excuse me. He is going to cast Flame Blade in his hand, and a big fiery scimitar appears in his hand. <laughs> the fire comes down his arm, and then it coalesces into his into a grip, and then comes out. <laughs> fire, Flame Blade, and then he's going to swing that bad boy at you. Um, let's see. He's going to roll that one at you. Ooh, a natural 20. Aha, reaction. It's not. <laughs> it's not a natural 20? Yep. What does that mean? Uh, it's just, it hits, up. but it's not a um, crit. Yeah, it is called Sentinel at Death's Door. Turn critical hits into normal hits within 30 feet of you as a reaction up to your wisdom, mo- okay. wisdom modifier number of times per cool. long rest. Way to, way to be on top of that. Boom. Um, but he is going to hit you for a little bit of the fire damage. Is that a reaction? Five. Yes. Eleven. Who boy! He rolled pretty good on that one. That's going to be uh, seventeen fire damage. Right, he's going to go in and he's going to jam that fire blade actually into your your belly and I feel it cauterizing the wound. In the words of a mighty man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, and then the last orc mage is going to turn to Jack, who just killed his buddy, and he is going to fire a scorching ray. Three rays of oh, fire. Oh, wait. Did yes. the mage take the damage? Huh? Did the mage take... Oh, he can. Ooh. I forgot about that. It He's got to make a wisdom. Also, if the Ooh. other mage is within 10 feet of me, he would take it too. He is not. He's within 20 feet. He's yeah. not. I should not have used my... All right, so he actually failed. He would have failed both times, which would have been... He took like 26 uh, damage. 17 and... Was it 11? 11, I think. I thought, I thought 26. Yeah, it was 11. So he would have taken 26 20, 20, damage. 28 damage. Or tw- yeah, sorry, 28 damage. My bad. Um, so did he die? No, he did not. <laughs> Dang. Sturdy. He was, he, yeah, Sturdy. so he is an- uh, another reason that he wanted to get up close and personal with the flame blade. He, because he, these things are all in his brain and they're kill- yeah. hurting him. Yeah. The Orc Mage is going to fire the scorching rays at Jack. You create three rays of fire and hurl them at targets within range. You can hurl them at one target or several, make a ranged spell attack for each ray. On a hit, the targets take 2d6 fire damage. So that would be dex, right? Range spell attack? Or no? No, it used spellcasting modifier. Spellcasting modifier, which is, I believe, for them. Probably intelligence. It is. Yeah, yeah. A natural 20. Okay. <laughs> These dice! I can't, I can't help you. <laughs> and then a 9 plus 2 is 11. All three of them are heading for you, though. And then an 18. Yeah. Okay. Oh, boy. So... So that would be 2d6 times 2 would be 4d6. So and then like another 2d6. So 6d6. Yep. Yeah. You can make it. 3, 8, uh, 11, 15, 18, and then 23. So 23 fire damage. Hey, I didn't make it. You did? I survived, yeah. Uh, surely you have that much health. All right. 38 health. So there is flame <laughs> hitting Jack. There's a fire blade in the belly of, of Grim. Uh, Arlo is safe. <laughs> uh, Burb, Burb is alive, and you can hear a faint whistle. And as you hear that faint whistle, and you turn towards Gah and Burb, Gah has begun to twitch. I knew it. I knew it, because he's Gah. cursed. Gah. Gah. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear a really loud Gah sound, and like he turns his head forward and like blood and just like condensed magic just fire out of his mouth and then when that stops you can see his like his uh, hands and legs begin to twitch and they begin to grow and course with magic and like the first thing you see quick real quickly before we end is like if you've seen the Incredible Hulk um, movie with Edward Norton uh, and the abomination creature you know, has elbows like kind of come out of the back of his arms and everything. Like you see, Gu- Guz's elbows like shoot out of the back of his forearms. His knee, two big bones shoot out of the tops of his knees, and then his body begins to grow and course with energy. 
And that's where we'll end today's episode. Thank you so much for listening. It was an extra long one because we've been gone for a week. Hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. Leave us a review on iTunes. Hope you're enjoying the show. And, and hit us up on Twitter. I'm uh, at Tank Media Games, I think. Um, uh, and just you know, chat with us about the show. We'd love to, to hear from you. Let us know if you like something or don't like something. But, Let us know if you like the new sound quality. Yeah, if it sounds any yeah. different, please do. And leave us a review on iTunes. Uh, and remember, most importantly, that we love you very much. Bye. Toodles. Later.